from up here I look down to earth. That bleeding in your ears is normal. Hello everyone and welcome back to A Critical Retrospective. My last video was about one of the major villains of the show, Lila, and so I decided why not keep up with that tradition and talk about another villain slash anti-hero in the show, and of course that character is Felix. I think that Felix is arguably the most interesting character in the whole show. For a character who appeared so infrequently across the seasons, he quickly became one of the most important characters to the overall narrative, and he received so much character development in the little amount of time that he ultimately had. Ultimately, having such little screen time built up mystique around his character. It makes it clear to the audience that whenever he does appear, something crazy is about to happen. Felix is a character who actually gets the plot going somewhere, which is definitely appreciated after four seasons of the same song and dance. However, Felix didn't exactly start out this way. Felix in season 3 is characterised very differently to how he is characterised for the rest of his appearances. And season 3 is the only place to start, so let's get to it. Felix's only appearance for me to talk about in season 3 is towards the end of the season, the episode titled Felix. In this episode, he's characterised very differently to how he is for the rest of the show. He's kind of just a prankster, honestly. Just a comically evil piece of garbage with no redeeming qualities or interesting facets to his character. He's just a straight up villain here. And at this point, the show is already chock full of villains, and so his appearance felt very unnecessary. He's just another character for the audience to fuel their hatred towards. He's another liar, like Lyle. Lila. He's a bully like Chloe, and he ends up making a deal with Hawkmoth just like both of them. One of the only unique things about him is that he's got a pretty nifty sleight of hand trick, but that's not really enough to distinguish him. The issue is, right now, he's underdeveloped. We learn that his father passed away recently, and that could be why he's acting up, I suppose, but we don't know anything about his father or Felix's relationship with him, so it's hard to understand. I feel like he should have been introduced a little bit earlier. Maybe an episode to fill in his backstory or something? And I'm not asking for a ton here, just something, anything to fill in his background. That way it's easier for me to understand why he does the things he does in this episode. Felix just feels like extra baggage as a character. He has very little to make him stand out from the rest of the villains. Literally the only interesting thing I can say about Felix this episode is the fact that he's able to steal Gabriel's ring at the end. But like I said earlier, we don't really know the importance of Gabriel's ring and so it's not really that interesting. We know that the rings are important to both families but not really why they're so important. I get the feeling we're supposed to feel this is intriguing anyway, but for the entirety of the show up until this point, that ring has just been a random ring on Gabriel's finger that we're not supposed to think too much about, and now all of a sudden we're supposed to emotionally invest ourselves in Felix pinching it. We don't know why it means so much to Gabriel, we don't know why it means so much to Felix, so why should it mean that much to us? The end of this episode is clearly supposed to highlight that Felix's main goal this episode was to get the ring from Gabriel. So what the heck does humiliating Adrian in front of all of his friends have to do with that goal? Did he do it just to be rude? Is it because he hates Adrian and wants to ruin his life and decide to steal the ring from Gabriel to kill two birds with one stone? I don't know. I mean, why does Felix hate Adrian? At the time, we were led to believe that it was because Adrian didn't show up to his father's funeral. But now we know that Felix hated his father, so it can't really be that. So I'm left concluding that Felix's actions make little sense this episode. What does he want? Why does the ring mean so much to Gabriel? I mean, it did belong to his wife, so that kind of makes sense as to why he's so possessive over it. Okay, so that's one plot hole just completely fixed. But why do Felix and his mother want it back so badly? The truth is... We don't exactly know at this point. And while it limits my investment in his character, I can't deny that it is somewhat intriguing. After all, Felix's reasons for wanting the ring is something that can be fleshed out in future seasons. But it does make Felix a little bit less intriguing in his first appearance, but that's to be expected. I mean, it's not like we need to know everything about Felix from the get-go. We can leave some room for the future. So, before we move on, I just want to touch on all the retcons with Season 3 Felix that don't really get followed up on after this, because it really is quite a lot of inconsistencies. Now, these are all going to just be nitpicks, but I think they're worth mentioning. 
Felix is a bit of a prankster this episode and then never again. He seems to be doing all these evil things for the thrill of it and then never again. He attempted to do something not so advertiser friendly to Ladybug and nobody brings it up after this. At the end of the season 3 episode, he ends up actually siding with Hawkmoth and trying to defeat Ladybug and Cat Noir with the trio of Punishers. And yet everyone just rolls over and pretends that didn't happen. Felix hates Adrian in this episode and then all of a sudden he actually cares about him in season 5. Felix thinks that Marinette's love for Adrian is pathetic. But then in emotion, he purposefully keeps Marinette alive because she means so much to Adrian. Yeah, that's pretty much all the retcons. So yeah, it's safe to say that Felix had a bit of a rocky start. And if I'm being honest, I feel like introducing him this way in season 3 was a bit of a mistake. Because he honestly doesn't feel like the same character. It's harder to get invested in his character when it does a complete 180. They really should have characterised him a lot differently than the way they did. And it feels like that no matter how interesting they make Felix in future seasons, this one episode from season 3 will always come back to haunt them. Because Felix is completely different to how he is in any of his other episodes. And I can see that when the writers were creating an overarching story for Felix, very little of it had to do with this episode. Felix's character is more consistent from the season 4 episode Gabriel Agrest onwards, because the story kept following on from Felix's characterization in season 4. When people talk about how much they love Felix as a villain and a character, they're never talking about this season 3 episode from what I see. I only ever see people talking about his exploits in season 4, because there's actually some depth to his character that season 3 Felix just fails to convey. And I'm actually starting to wonder if the writers realised this as well. This is speculation on my part, but I just can't shake the feeling that the writers realised that Felix's character in season 3 was relatively bland. And so they decided to reinvent him from the ground up into a more interesting character. But it leaves his debut appearance being quite hollow and useless. The Felix in this episode doesn't do things that the Felix in future episodes would ever do. So we're left with weird little inconsistencies and plot holes in his story. At the time that this episode aired, it was okay. We didn't know why Felix hated Adrian and wanted the ring, but we could find out in future seasons. We could find out how Felix's father's death impacted him negatively in this episode. But instead of answering those questions, the writers just pretended they didn't exist. We never find out why he hates Adrian, because apparently he never did. It's heavily implied that Felix was acting cold and distant in his debut episode because of his father's death. Implying that Felix and his father got along and had a very nice, endearing, positive relationship, right? Nope! Felix's father was actually a terrible, horrible, evil man, and Felix didn't like him that much at all. And so we forget about Felix's debut episode because it doesn't line up with his character anymore. My guess is that the writers were dissatisfied with his character and decided to change things up to make him more unique among the cast. And I honestly think that they changed him for the better. So let's talk about that now, shall we? Now this is quite an improvement. Back in season 3, I just wanted Felix off of my screen as soon as possible, but in season 4, the opposite is true. He's a lot more cunning and calculating than he was in season 3, and the rivalry with Gabriel makes it even more interesting. Back in season 3, Felix seems to have allied himself with Hawkmoth, but in season 4, he seems more suspicious of Gabriel than anything else and wants to get one over on him. Either Felix was tricking Hawkmoth back in season 3, or Felix is just an episode we should forget about, which I'm all here for. Honestly, it feels so removed from the rest of Felix's character across the show that I'm not even gonna bring it up anymore, there's no point. Felix appears three times in season 4 and his first episode is in episode 9, Gabriel Agress. Felix's whole thing this episode is that he suspects Gabriel of being Shadow Moth, and Gabriel's whole thing this episode is that he wants to take the ring that Felix stole from him back which is one of the only things carried over from season 3. They really expand on the idea that Felix is Gabriel's enemy, as both Felix and Gabriel are trying to trick each other. Gabriel wants back the ring and so tries to akumatize Felix to try and mind control him into giving back the ring, I suppose. But Felix manages to break out of the akumatization. He then rips the fake senti monster Gabriel's trousers so that when the real Gabriel shows up and doesn't have the torn trousers, Felix realizes that there's a fake. And these are the kind of wits that Felix was missing in season 3. And this finally makes him unique among all the other villains, because unlike all of the others, he's actually a competent person. He knows what he wants and he knows how to get it. And he especially contrasts with Gabriel. Remember, this is a man who has akumatized Mr. Pigeon 72 times and loses every single episode. Needless to say, it's not that easy to take him seriously with a track record like that. Felix is a different story. In this episode, unlike season 3, Felix doesn't draw too much attention to himself. He waits for an opportunity and then seizes it. And his machinations actually make sense and it makes sense as to why he would succeed with his plans, unlike somebody else I know. Honestly, now that I think about it, I'm starting to think that Felix is being portrayed as an anti-hero. 
hero rather than a villain. And I think it's because of the fact that he doesn't side with Shadow Moth. He's trying to exploit Gabriel for his own purposes, and yet he doesn't side with the heroes either. He's on his own, in terms of his actions and in terms of his morality. And that's what's so interesting about him. Imagine a scenario where Felix was actually on Gabriel's side, just like Season 3 seems to have been hinting. Wouldn't that just be really boring? Felix just being another ally for Hawk Moth to rely on. We already have one, two, three separate characters who fill that role. We did not need another one. And thankfully, it seems that the writers realized this as well. Felix has been turned into the first morally grey character in the show ever, and it makes him stand out in a way that other villains can only dream of achieving. After Miracle Queen, the idea of Chloe being an anti-hero was thrown around by some YouTubers. She could help both the heroes and the villains if she had something to gain from either side. And that could have been something interesting to follow through with after Miracle Queen. However, the writers decided to just make her a full-on villain for reasons, I guess. And so there was a big anti-hero shaped hole in the show, one that Felix was primed to fill. And I think that being an anti-heroic, morally grey wildcard is the exact type of character Felix was born to play. Oh. Oh no. We'll get to that later. Okay, so I've talked about his appearance in the episode Gabriel Aggressed. Now let's get to where he really shines. The finale. In my Lila video, I mentioned how the synopsis for the finale mentioned Lila making her big return. However, it seemed very weird that Lila was really sidelined by Felix. And that doesn't mean that I hate the fact that Felix got the spotlight. Actually, I think Felix was definitely the best part of this finale. Lila really didn't need to be here. Sure, she's kind of integral to the fact that Adrian doesn't want to go around the world, but really, I feel like leaving his friends with nobody around to help him would have been enough. But this isn't the Lila video, so I need to stay on track. Felix decides to help Adrian not go around the world, but really he's just serving his own purposes. This causes Adrian and Felix to swap places. Felix takes advantage of the fact that Gabriel and Natalie think he's Adrian in order to break into the safe. And this is what I mean when I say that Felix is a vehicle to move the plot forward. Felix accidentally ends up going down into Shadow Moth's evil lair in the basement, and he ends up finding Emily's refrigerated corpse, and he's pretty terrified. And this part was very intriguing to me. Felix seemed very shocked and scared that Emily was down there in the basement. He knew that Gabriel was Shadow Moth and yet he was completely mortified by the extent of his actions, implicitly telling us that Felix has some humanity in him. Because even though he's not really a great person, he would never go as far as Gabriel did. Felix has his own goals and ambitions morally separate from the heroes, but that doesn't make him a monster like Gabriel. This was the first time that there was ever an implication that there was more to Felix beneath the surface. Like they did with Chloe in Season 2. A moment of silence for Chloe's character development. Anyway, Felix is definitely a more interesting character than he was in Season 3, just by this scene alone. I wonder how Season 3 Felix would have reacted to this. Didn't you say you were gonna stop talking about Felix in Season 3? Uh, I did, didn't I? Oh well. Not only that, but in Risk, Felix tells Adrian that he needs to stop doing everything his father is telling him. It's hard to tell just how genuine Felix is being with his advice, because it feels like he's only trying to manipulate Adrian in order to get him to swap places with him so he can enact his grand plan. But as we learn later in Emotion, Felix does care about Adrian, so there could be a hint of sincerity here. That's another pretty interesting thing about Felix. It's hard to tell what his ulterior motives actually are, and whether or not they're beneficial to the people around him or just himself. And yes, Felix pretends to be Adrian again in this episode, but I don't really mind that. It leads to some interesting plot developments in this finale, so I'm all here for it. It's all about how Felix uses the Adrian disguise. In his debut episode, Felix pretended to be Adrian in order to ruin his reputation with his friends. A petty, shallow motivation for a petty and shallow villain. This time, Felix only really messes with Adrian a little bit, and then uses his persona to achieve his own personal goals. I think this is much better for his character. He doesn't just mess with people, but he uses them for his own personal gain. Speaking of which, let's get to part two of the finale, Strike Back. We all know what happens in this episode. Ladybug gives the dog Miraculous to Felix, thinking that he's Adrian. And of course, Felix, using his brain, takes advantage of this. He sneakily touches the ball to the yo-yo, and so that will allow him to retrieve the yo-yo whenever he wants. And since the yo-yo gives him direct passage to the Miraculouses, I bet you can guess what happens. Felix decides to extort Gabriel for the Peacock Miraculous, because that's what he's really been after all this time. Now on the surface, this seems to fly in the face of 
my idea that Felix is an anti-hero because he doesn't side with Shadow Moth when clearly he's making a deal with him. Well, the way I see it, this is just another trick. Gabriel questions whether or not Felix is going to use the Peacock Miraculous against them, with Felix assuring him that if he wanted to hurt Gabriel, he would have done it a long time ago. But as we know in the episode Emotion, Felix was always intending on using the Peacock Miraculous to betray Gabriel. So really, Felix only decided to team up with Shadow Moth in order to get what he wanted from him so that he could betray him later. In my humble opinion, this is Felix's character at his best. A loose cannon who serves himself. Felix is really coming into his own as an anti-hero now. An anti-hero is a hero who lacks traditionally heroic qualities. They either do the right things for the wrong reasons or the wrong things for the right reasons. Which is exactly what Felix did in Strike Back. Putting his intentions to the side for a moment, Felix did a good thing. He helped Ladybug save the world. However, this is where the unheroic part comes in, as he only did that to gain Ladybug's trust so that he could stab her in the back later. And this really adds fuel to the fire that is Felix's love among the fandom. And it makes him a favourite among the antagonists. People point out how it took four seasons for Gabriel to get the Miraculouses, but Felix took like an episode. It's honestly really hilarious how the only thing that's setting Felix apart from the other villains, quote unquote, is that he's the only good one. And I feel like I wouldn't be saying that if I took into account his appearance in season 3. But things only get better for him in season 4, and it really is a testament to the writer's ability to make good characters. The fact that they could take such a nothing character and turn him into such an interesting one is so crazy. Think about it, if Felix wasn't in this finale, I'm not really sure what they could have done. Imagine if they decided to make Lila do something, ugh. I know that I'm annoyed that Lila barely got anything in season 4, but seriously, I feel like the finale just wasn't her time to shine. And the writers realised that too, if only they managed to realise that her potential was completely squandered for the rest of the season. Either way, Felix definitely carried this season. I mean, don't get me wrong, the other characters and the other storylines this season were definitely great, but Felix just took things to the next level whenever he was on screen. The plot moved fast faster than a bullet train whenever he got things done. He took advantage of the cards that were given to him and manipulated characters for his own personal gain. Now we can see how much he's improved from the other villains in the cast. He's not too similar to Chloe anymore because his siding with Shadow Moth was done for his own separate nefarious purposes and he betrayed him later. Sure, he and Lila are both liars, but while Lila lies about both her personality and all the crazy things she gets up to, Felix lied to Ladybug about who he actually was, and that allowed him to take advantage of Ladybug's trust and use it against her. This is what makes Felix the ultimate antagonist in my eyes. The writers combine unused, interesting concepts from the other antagonists and use them in Felix to their fullest potential. If Felix were to remain the same in this season as he did in season 3, then everything would be substantially worse because his character wasn't built for complexities like this. Season 3 Felix's character probably would have just joined Shadow Moth for the fun of it to cause chaos and destruction and ruin Adrian's life and drink his tears. They're just not the same character, and so this complete remix was necessary to create more interesting stories with him. He was a much simpler character back in the day, and so they added all of these layers. Layers that make him a complex character that I enjoy watching on screen. I'm really looking forward to what Season 5 will do for his character. So, let's find out. <laughs> Is this some kind of twisted joke? For the most part, Felix in Season 5 remains as interesting as he was in Season 4. Episode 2, Multiplication, starts with Ladybug and Cat Noir trying to track Felix down after being made aware of his betrayal. It's a very intriguing idea and follows on quite nicely after the events of the finale. Felix's betrayal definitely has a long-lasting impact on the characters, and that's something I've wanted to see from the show since Season 3. Back in those dark days, any character development would have been self-contained to an episode, and then we'd immediately follow with a filler episode that meant absolutely nothing. But lately we've been getting bombarded with so many important plot points that it's hard to keep up at times, but I'm grateful nonetheless. As it turns out, Felix didn't end up having that much screen time in this episode, but that's okay. He doesn't really do that much until the tail end of the season anyway. What matters is that the episodes that he does take part in make him more captivating as a character, relatively speaking. Let's talk about what was arguably his best episode this season, Emotion. This is the episode that brings the most nuance to Felix's character, because it showcases his changing feelings towards Adrian given that the fact his plan is all for him. He creates a sentient monster that allows him to snap everybody out of existence so that only he and Kagami and Adrian will be the ones left in the world. Felix claims that everything he's done, he's done for Adrian, but I find that kind of difficult to believe considering how antagonistic he's been to him literally every episode he's appeared in before this one. I guess Felix just changed his mind about Adrian over those episodes and realised that he's a fellow Santi monster and needs protecting just like himself. It's just a little bit weird that we didn't see this character development unfold before our very eyes. After all, only the audience knows whenever a character development has occurred and so it would have been useful for us to see that on screen. But I can still rationalise it. 
because Felix realising he was wrong about Adrian is something that's very interesting to watch. And yet, it doesn't really sacrifice his qualities as an anti-hero either. Off screen, Felix realises that Adrian is his equal, and so decides to help him in his own twisted, anti-heroic way. His moral compass hasn't fully aligned yet, and so he doesn't truly understand what it means to help somebody. And this is an interesting development, just as long as they don't push him too far into being a hero, which I don't think he truly deserves. And that's what's the most important thing here. I'm open to the idea of Felix redeeming himself, but it needs to be a nice slow burner redemption. A season long arc. Slowly, Felix would realise the error of his ways and act to amend them. As it stands, he's done too many terrible things to be instantly forgiven. And I think they do this quite well in the episode following emotion, pretension. Felix kidnaps Kagami in order to free her from her mother, because he believes that Kagami is being controlled and oppressed by her mother. This speaks to Felix's true nature as a senti monster and his desire for freedom, which is what he fought for from his very start. This episode gives us a greater look at Felix and his morality. He stole the Peacock Miraculous from Gabriel because he wanted the senti monsters to be protected. Back when Gabriel had the Peacock Miraculous, he would create many senti monsters and then when they outlived their usefulness, he would just kill them. Felix sees senti monsters being destroyed and doesn't think it's fair considering their sentience. Felix tells Kagami that when you bring a living being into this world, you need to take care of them and find the meaning for their existence, and to deprive them of that is monstrous. It's interesting, and I'm glad to see these layers in Felix's character, so now we can understand why he does the things he does. It's because he wants to protect the lives of the senti monsters. It's a great development for his character, because it was foreshadowed pretty well. At the end of Strike Back, Felix apologises to the senti monsters who were destroyed, because he too is a senti monster and so he knows what it's like to be oppressed, and so he wants the peacock miraculous so that that he and his fellow senti monsters can have their existences protected and validated. Learning this about him recontextualizes his actions in season 4 and adds more depth to it. Just as long as they don't push him too far into being an actual full on hero and having everyone forgive his actions, I can accept this. I'm fine with them explaining his actions, but I'm not sure about them excusing them. Felix has still done some pretty awful things, and so I don't think a redemption would really work right now. But this is a pretty good start, and so I'm looking forward to season 6 really developing this redemption into something really strong, and maybe one day he can earn everybody's forgiveness. But what's important is that they take this redemption slowly, just like Chloe's was before it was thrown in the bin. She slowly over time learned that she was doing stupid awful things and tried to correct them. But this was done over a season and a half, she didn't change right away. They focused on the journey rather than the destination, even though we never ended up actually getting to the destination but that's just semantics at this point. The point is, Chloe's character development and her redemption arc was the example of one done right. Felix is on the starting grounds of a redemption but he's still far away from actually being truly redeemed. But that's okay, because we've got time, and if there's one thing the Miraculous writers love, it's taking their time. I imagine Felix will spend most of season 6 trying to make up for the damage that he's done, but he's gonna have to put a lot of work- Are you kidding me? He's already redeemed! Yeah, I've been postponing it for way too long. It's time to talk about how they messed everything up. Episode 24, Representation. Look, I didn't have this episode ranked very high in my season 5 ranking video, and I didn't really talk about why Felix was really a bad part of this episode as in-depth as I would like to, so let's do it now. Felix creates a senti monster that will allow Marinette to see the truth about Felix and the aggressed's past. It's a very weird scene that requires reading between the lines in order to discern any meaning from. We learn that Felix's father, Colt Fathom, created him using the Peacock Miraculous, and hated Felix, and so decided to treat him really terribly. And so Felix stole the ring from his father once he died due to using the Peacock Miraculous when it was broken. It's an interesting backstory, and it does explain some of Felix's actions, but surprisingly Surprisingly, not all of them. We still don't know why he hates Gabriel and Adrian, something that's been part of his character for the majority of his appearances, but only mysteriously disappeared in emotion. Not only that, but they try to explain Felix's actions by saying that he wasn't loved by his father. This is definitely an effective way to gain my sympathy, but wait, where have I seen this before? This feels all too familiar. Chloe just clearly demonstrated that there is nothing exceptional about her. Oh yeah, Chloe's reason for being the way she was was the exact same as Felix's. And yet Thomas Astruc has the characters repeat time and time again that this doesn't excuse her actions, so why does Felix get an excuse? I'd argue that he's done worse than Chloe, and yet he gets a redemption. Not just a redemption, but a really quick one as well. Felix is not your enemy, everyone is wrong about him. Felix doesn't really deserve the redemption that he got. 
He does so many terrible things, and yet at the end of season 5, he joins the miraculous superhero team. After everything he's done, Felix has just given a pat on the back, a slap on the wrist, and given his miraculous permanently. It's just so unsatisfying to see him not really earn his redemption at all. Sure, he had a pretty difficult upbringing, and I sympathise with him for that, but he's still done terrible things in his own right. I'm not against the idea of Felix redeeming himself, in fact, I love the idea, but it needs to be done better than this. Marinette learns about Felix's tragic backstory and then immediately forgives him, completely removing all of the resentment she probably built up against him for doing what he did in Strike Back. Wait, Marinette just instantly forgives him? Does she not remember when he did this in his debut episode? What about causing her to lose all of the Miraculouses by stealing them, something that's caused Marinette a great deal of stress in the early episodes of season 5. What about snapping everybody she loves out of existence? How does she feel about that? Come to think of it, how does anybody who Felix wronged feel about what he did? If we had more time to explore his redemption arc, then maybe we could have answers to these questions. But we don't get any of that. I don't have a problem with the tragic backstory, in fact it's really sad and I definitely think it's the best part of this whole arc. My issue is with the pacing. We needed more time for Felix to grapple with the consequences of his actions, but we didn't get that time because Felix rarely appears. And this wasn't an issue until the writers wanted to redeem him. And good redemption arcs need more screen time than this. Screen time that can be used to show the character trying to make amends. Because that's what makes redemption arcs interesting. The audience grows to really like and care about a character who's trying to fix their mistakes. But Felix doesn't really try to change his ways to anybody other than Adrian and Kagami. But other than that, he doesn't make an effort to make commends with anybody else. Neither Marinette nor the people of Paris who he has allowed Monarch to continue to terrorise. It's such a disappointing end to his character. Chloe deserves to have her miraculous taken away because she misused it, but not Felix. He's just allowed to be there with all the other heroes who he probably tried to kill and emotion. Felix definitely doesn't deserve to stand by the side of heroes who have done far better than he has. Like I keep saying again and again, this redemption should have been taken over the course of a season, but they decided to rush it out for some reason. They took so long to give Chloe redemption arc only to throw it in the bin and yet they take such a short amount of time to give Felix a redemption arc that he doesn't deserve? It feels like such a double standard that could only be born from a vendetta against Chloe. Overall, I feel like Felix in season 5 was a mixed bag. On one hand, he had a lot of good moments that really strengthened his character and deepened his motivations and would have been great stepping stones for a future redemption. However, they decided to shoot their shot with completely redeeming Felix way too soon. It's the same problem I have with Gabriel's quote unquote redemption, but we'll get to that in the Gabriel video coming up. Season 5 could have really brought some new potential to Felix, and in some ways it did, but they sped things up too soon. And I think the writers should have stayed consistent with their approach, just this once. In conclusion, Felix is a very interesting character and a very unique one at that. He's the definition of an anti-hero for most of the show. He doesn't morally align with Ladybug, Cat Noir, or even Shadow Moth. He used to treat everybody in his life with the same lack of empathy, only looking out for himself. But then we get those layers to his character. He has the ability to come to terms with where he went wrong, and he gains the ability to want to help the people he cares about, if only in his own way. And these are the signs towards the first steps of a redemption. Or at least they should have been. They went too fast with Felix's redemption to the point where it feels unearned. If this was a better written show, Felix would probably have to work a little bit harder to earn everybody's trust back. But he doesn't have to because reasons? Despite the fact that he's done some pretty deplorable things. It's just frustrating to see characters like Chloe left in the dirt, and yet Felix gets to get away scot-free with everything that he's done. All I needed was one character, just one character willing to call Felix out for everything. One character to let him know that he's gonna have to work a little bit harder than that. Presumably Adrian or Marinette, since Felix wronged those two the most. But that plot contrivance isn't going to take away the enjoyment I get out of his character. Felix definitely came at a time when Miraculous was getting pretty stale, and his unique character traits reinvigorated interest in the show, at least for me. And despite the relatively lacklustre and unearned ending he got in season 5, he had more than a fair share of captivating moments. And at the end of the day, that's what me and the rest of the audience watching the show is going to remember about him. Because if nothing else, Felix is just that. Memorable. Thank you all so much for watching this video. You know something that completely blindsided me? I forgot to do the whole favourite comment thing in the outro of the last video. And if there's one thing I'm not going to do, it's break the promises I made to you way back when. So, my favourite comment from the Wish video was this. Thank you, Que Panem et Circensis. I apologise if I completely butchered that name, but thank you so much for the comment. I think you had some really interesting things to say about the songs. Especially about this wish and at all costs. I agree with everything you said. 
said. Secondly, my favorite comment from the Lila video was from Danger Buff Rocky, talking about how the three Oni masks represent the different sides to Harumi. It really goes to show just how much care and attention the writers put into Ninjago Season 8. Astrid and Co could definitely learn a thing or two from them, I think we can all agree. Furthermore, at the time we recorded this, we just hit 1,000 subscribers a few hours ago, so thank you all so very much. When I started this channel two months ago, I didn't think I'd hit this threshold until March or April. It was completely out of my hands, and so I just have to thank all of you. You guys all made this possible, and I promise that your subscriptions will all be worth it. This means I can finally get monetized and put ads on my videos, which is unbelievably exciting. I'd appreciate it if you didn't skip the ads when they come on because it helps me out a lot. I understand that ads can be kind of annoying, but come on, do it for me. Because it allows me to make bigger and better videos for all of you. This has been a Critical Retrospective, and I'll see you in the next video essay.